Sophie had always dreamed of vacationing at a luxurious California resort, but life's demands kept that dream just out of reach. As a single mother, she dedicated herself tirelessly to ensuring her two children, Mark and Kirsty, had everything they needed. Sophia knew better than anyone that her children were the center of her world. With just a few years separating them in age, Mark and Kirsty shared a special bond, spending hours in imaginative play with everything from tiny dolls to oversized plastic cars. Watching her children's joyful interactions filled Sophie's heart with immense happiness. Yet despite the joy her children brought her, a shadow lingered over Sophie's life. Two years earlier, her husband had died under mysterious circumstances, leaving a void that was impossible to fill. Bruce Taylor, a successful entrepreneur, had often traveled to nearby cities and states for work. Though his job demanded long hours that provided the financial security that had allowed the family to live comfortably. But his untimely death had changed everything, leaving Sophia to navigate the challenges of parenthood alone. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary on that fateful day. Bruce got up, said his goodbyes to his family, and then went to work. Yours truly will be tardy today, he mentioned before departing, emphasizing the importance of being present for an upcoming meeting. His final words might have been different if Sophie had known what was to come. She had been played by an unexplainable fear all day, and by the time the phone rang that night, she had a terrible feeling that something bad had happened. It was just as she had feared. A dispassionate police officer's voice broke the news to Sophia that her husband had perished in a vehicle crash. According to the investigation, Bruce was driving too fast for the conditions and lost control of his vehicle on a particularly challenging stretch of highway on his way to an important appointment. After crashing into a ditch and flipping over several times, the vehicle eventually caught fire. Despite the near incineration of Bruce's Ford, rescuers recovered his burnt body. It seemed like there was no need to pursue any further legal action, but Sophia could not believe her husband was really dead. As far as Sophia was aware, Bruce seldom drove faster than the posted speed limit. Even after all those years on the road, he had never once been issued a traffic citation. Sophia was already in immense pain after losing her spouse, and it only became worse with time. The children continued to pester her with questions about when their daddy would return home even after two years had passed since Bruce's death. The bereaved widow was unable to control her tears throughout that time. How could she break the news to her kids that their dad would be gone forever? To make sure her kids didn't feel deprived, Sophia did everything she could. She put in long hours at the office and devoted her leisure time to her two children, Kirsty and Mark. She took them around town, including to the park, the movies, and other landmarks. Mark made a passing comment about wanting to visit the beach at some point. Kirsty, who was a year younger than her seven-year-old brother, was immediately enamored with the idea. Part of their inspiration for this desire came from a film they had watched not long ago about Caribbean pirates who sailed under the Jolly Roger. Mark, a little boy, dreamed of seeing the ocean after being captivated by stories of long-gone ships, crashing waves, and hidden treasure. Finally, Sophia made up her mind to go to a California resort. After all these years of talking about it, a getaway to the beach, she reasoned, would do her good as well, providing an opportunity to shake off the mounting issues she had been experiencing lately. Because of this, Sophia decided to take a break from work and start preparing for the trip. So are you ready for this trip or what? Sophia asked, holding the airplane tickets. Of course, we're ready. Both Mark and Kirsty let out a unified yell. Warmly smiling, Sophia decided to check her luggage again. Something kept niggling at her and she couldn't shake it. Maybe it was the kid's sunscreen, sunglasses, or hats. Mom, can I sail on a yak or swim with a mask and flippers? Mark asked, his excitement palpable. Absolutely just make sure you get enough sleep before the flight. Sophia reassured her son, lovingly placing her hand on his shoulder. Although they could have taken a bus from Utah to California, the journey would have been much longer, and they were pressed for time. The next morning, they woke up earlier than usual, had breakfast, and headed to the airport. It was Mark and Kirstie's first time on an airplane, and they were bursting with excitement as they got their first close-up view of the massive aircraft. Seated in economy class, they eagerly pressed their faces to the windows, eager to see the world from above. Sophia smiled at her children's enthusiasm and then closed her eyes, hoping to catch a little sleep during a short flight. She wanted to make the most of the journey, but memories of her late husband kept surfacing, reminding her of his absence on this trip. However, as the plane began its descent, Sophia's sadness turned into anticipation. They were greeted by warm sunshine and a gentle sea breeze in California, the salty tang of the ocean air, a welcome taste of the vacation to come. Where are we going, Mom? To the beach to see the surfers, please. Mark inquired eagerly, adjusting the baseball cap he wore. Let's go straight to the beach after dropping off our belongings at the hotel. Sophia smiled back. Don't worry, you'll have plenty of time to enjoy the sun. In truth, she was just as keen to get her toes in the warm water of the ocean. 
Sophia, Mark, and Kirsty located a spot close to the water, where the warm waves of the ocean softly brushed their legs and their skin gradually started to turn bronze. Soon, Mark and Kirsty asked Sophia if they could have some lemonade because it was a very hot day. Sophia noticed a drink stand next to the beach entrance as she swiftly looked around. I'll return in just 30 minutes, Sophia remarked. Mark, you're in charge while I'm away. Take this responsibility seriously, she said, handing him some money before heading to get the lemonade. She could see the man behind the counter even from a distance. He was wearing a baseball cap with the insignia of a well-known football team and an apron with branding on it. She pulled out the cash and got ready to place the order. As Sophia walked over, the vendor looked up and said, What can I do for you, ma'am? Sophia almost fainted when she realized what she was about to ask for. Three lemonades. She gasped and staggered back, struggling to catch her breath. Ma'am, are you okay? Is there a problem? The concerned vendor inquired. However, Sophia was so taken aback that she was speechless. No, this is impossible. He passed away two years ago, crossed her mind. Sophia was being nudged to move aside by the people in line, but she was fixated on the man selling lemonade. Her horror stemmed from the fact that the man wearing the branded apron bore a striking resemblance to her late husband. But how could it be Bruce? Why wouldn't he be posing as someone else? Sophia's mind raced with thoughts. The proprietor of the booth, a stunning woman in her thirties with a prominently round belly, suddenly joined the seller. Honey, you got people waiting again. Simon, you spend way too much time with each customer, haven't I told you? The woman scolded, obviously irritated. Sophia was completely confused by the scenario. Are Simon and this woman in a relationship? This is not possible. Bruce has two kids and is married, she thought, struggling to control her emotions. Sophia went back to her kids after purchasing lemonade from another vendor, but she continued to search for answers. She struggled to figure out what was going on during this period, but knew she had to get the kids back to the hotel first. Mark protested, but mom, we just got here. My sweetheart, don't worry. We're going to return later today. You got to watch Kirsty at the motel for the time being. You two can watch some cartoons, Sophia said, attempting to sound assured and comforting. After dropping the kids off at the hotel, Sophia returned to the beach. But this time, her purpose was not to unwind, it was to watch the lemonade vendor who bore a striking resemblance to her late husband. She was determined to wait and find out the truth. The man quickly ran out of lemonade and began packing up to go home. After taking off his apron, Sophia muttered to herself, I'll discover your residence, Bruce, as she stealthily trailed behind him. It turned out that Simon resided in a large house covered in ivy and with red tiles half a mile from the city beach. Sophia ran to the door and gave a gentle knock as soon as Bruce's imposter arrived at the residence. The time for truth has come, she thought. Sophia was shocked when the pregnant proprietor of the lemonade stand opened the door with a sour expression on her face. She curtly asked, What do you want? The hotel is at the end of the street. I'm out looking for a motel. I came to learn the truth about my spouse, Bruce, Sophia murmured, her voice quivering with nervousness, fear, and sorrow. Fear entered the woman's gaze as her face grew as pale as chalk and her lips trembled. So his name is Bruce, she responded after finally gathering herself. He goes by Simon now. It's my preference. You can't expect me to just let him go, even though I knew you would find us. I would stop at nothing to maintain our family unit while I carry his child to term. Anger heated Sophia's face. What's happening here? Bruce is already a father to two kids. He is my legal spouse. She cried as she entered the home. The other woman, however, was not about to give up. Anger and resolve blazed in her eyes. Bruce happened to walk into the living room at that precise moment and unwittingly witnessed their altercation. Kate, what's going on here? Just who is this woman and what gives you the right to address her in such a way? Bruce inquired, his annoyance plainly visible. It was at that moment that Sophia realized her husband actually lacked any recollection of his history. Bruce, I am your actual wife. Mark and Kirsty are your two children, she added, her voice quivering. Kate retreated to the kitchen after hearing Sophia's remarks, and the woman yelled out inconsolably. In the midst of a pounding headache that sent Bruce tumbling to his knees, flashes of his past started flooding back, clearing the fog of his irritated mind. Every detail is etched into my memory. My name is not Simon. My name is Bruce Taylor. The man exclaimed, standing up from his knees. Sophia hurried to her husband and clung to him firmly as she sobbed hysterically. During that poignant moment of emotional reconnection, both of them overlooked Kate, who was stealthily reaching for a kitchen knife. If you won't be with me, you won't be with anyone. Kate screamed as she swung the knife toward Bruce. Thankfully, Bruce ducked out of harm's way just in time, and the blade barely missed his shoulder. He seized Kate's hand and threw her to the ground as Sophia began dialing 911. The truth emerged after 30 minutes. Kate Davis was suffering from a severe, untreated mental illness that led to psychopathic behavior. 
Two years earlier, she had encountered Bruce, a man with a head injury after he was attacked by a hitchhiker who stole his car and later died in a crash. Instead of taking Bruce to the hospital, Kate, driven by loneliness, brought him to her home in California and manipulated his amnesia to create a false life together. Eventually, the truth surfaced and Bruce was reunited with his wife, Sophia, after two long years. With Kate now in a psychiatric clinic receiving treatment, Bruce and Sophia finally took the vacation they had dreamed of, renewing their vows at a luxurious California resort. Their children, Mark and Kirsty, watched their parents' happiness and promised to cherish these moments, knowing there were more joyful times ahead. What are your thoughts on this story? We'd love to hear them in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That's all for today. See you next time.